All right, Brandon, why don't you tell us a little bit about your first steps into jiu-jitsu? Yeah, so I got exposed to grappling in 2005. I was a sophomore uh, in high school. My buddy invited me over to his place. He said, hey, let's come grapple. I'm like, I don't even know what that is, but sure, I'll show up. And I showed up and uh, he's choking me out on his living room floor. I had no idea what was going on. And uh, I didn't really know, but he was working with his sister's ex-boyfriend at the time who was uh, fighting MMA here in Hawaii. So he had some experience and uh, he just kept choking me out over and over. And I just remember feeling so helpless and I'm, I'm pretty competitive. So I got, um, you know, a little, uh, a little irked, you know, I was pretty irritated. Like, man, I, I, I gotta learn this stuff. You know, I can't let this happen to me similar to you, you know? And um, I remember going home and uh, looking online, just forums, you know, YouTube wasn't really around back then. I would go to Safeway when my dad was buying groceries. I'd be in the magazine aisle, like looking at the latest black belt magazine, just trying to study up on techniques. I was hungry for information. And, um, you know, I just got to a point where um, I was interested in learning, but I wasn't quite ready to take a step into an actual gym just yet. And so my friends were doing a lot of backyard training. We would go to the rec center across the street from our high school uh, after school, and we would kind of put together these um, you know, I don't, I don't kind of call it flight club necessarily, but we would grapple like on the floor, like just mats? carpet, just carpet, okay. just carpet in the rec center. And so, um, the word kind of spread through high school. Hey, these guys are grappling after school and uh, oh, it got a little out of hand. So we, actually had to, we had to shut it down, uh, cause we got in trouble from the, the sophomores don't want anybody else yeah, hearing about that. From the people that, uh, ran the, the rec center we got in trouble with. But anyways, um, my journey continued, you know, I was grappling with my friends in the living room floors and, um, you know, I just, I didn't like losing. I think that was part of it, but I think, uh, on a, on a deeper, uh, standpoint, I really didn't like who I was. You know, I was a, a five foot two, 115 pound freshman. Stud. Uh, I was tiny and um, nowadays I see high school kids walking around I'm like man if I was the same size back then as these kids are now like I'll be normal but I was abnormal I was the only small kid me and this one other guy and um, I just I didn't like it you know I didn't like getting picked on every day I didn't like um, you know people who I, I was supposed to be you know they were supposed to be trustworthy people I called friends who would um, bully me but bully me in a way that I was almost supposed to accept, you yeah. know, like they yeah. would take my hat, they would play monkey in the middle with me, they would whip me in the nuts with it, you know, mm -hmm. just fun and games. But really inside I was like, I, I couldn't do anything to stop it. And I was the type of person who would never stand up for myself verbally because I was afraid that I could never back it up physically. Mm -hmm. And so I would get pushed out of my chair. A lot happened. I got picked on a lot. And so as I'm, I'm learning this grappling stuff, I'm like, this is pretty cool. But I think the deeper reason inside me was Man, I'm really trying to figure out who I am and kind of step into, um, you know, just being a confident person who was okay with me. And my buddy Mikey, fast forward to about junior, senior year, he said, hey, you're getting pretty good. Like, if you're going to train, you might as well come train with professionals. Like, why don't you come and check out this Gracie gym? I was like, nah, man, I don't need that. Like, I'm good. I'm going to keep, you know, doing the research online, checking out the magazines. And, you know, I started to get better on my own just by researching. Um, and... I finally got to a point where he just kept asking me and I was like, you know what, I'll come check out a class. And I remember walking in for the first time, deer in the headlights, you know, I was like, it was super intimidating and the structure of the building, like you walk in, everybody's eyes just boom, go right on you, you know? <laughs> so I was really afraid when I first walked in, but I remember that night watching my instructor at the time roll with a purple belt that he was a lot smaller than, or the purple belt was a lot bigger than him. And I remember he, the purple belt tried to arm bar him and he like spun out and he unbarred the purple belt and I was like oh my gosh my mind was blown because I was like this guy who was smaller could do that to a guy who was bigger than him like I gotta learn this stuff and he had the type of jujitsu that was a little bit more acrobatic and I was just like this is the coolest thing ever uh, but on that same night I remember being in the corner and I was getting uh, kimura by a, um, a sophomore and I was a senior at, by that time mm -hmm. actually I think I just graduated so I just graduated and he was still a sophomore and the instructor walked over and he said, hey, uh, he told the student, take it easy on him, it's his first class. And he was a teen, I'm an adult, you know, I'm 18 at this point, and that was a very uh, humbling experience yeah. for me, knowing this guy was an orange belt or a yellow belt at the time, and 
he had to take it easy on me. This you know, coach is taking care of you, and you're like, oh! Yeah, the instructor <laughs> told him to take it easy on me, and I was like, oh, man, you know, I got a lot to learn. But um, I think it was a combination of me being humbled, me wanting to develop myself on the inside for something I was searching for, and me just being in awe at watching somebody else who was very skilled at jujitsu. And so I continued my journey. I got my blue belt in about 10 months. And um, back then it was a shark tank, you know, sink or swim. And so we got beat up. We went through what we call the gauntlet. Mm -hmm. You know, you roll with a bunch of guys on promotion night. And um, I realized that, again, the reason why I started jujitsu wasn't the same reason why I stuck around because, you know, initially I started to be competitive, to, you know, prove myself to my friends um, and to, uh, you know, just pursue something that I thought was really cool. And then as I began to progress, I realized that more so than the technique and the things that I was gaining on the mat, it was help, helping me be a better person off the mat, on mm -hmm. the inside. And so uh, I was the type of guy who would never raise his hand in class. I was definitely afraid to talk to girls. And in fact, when people would say, oh, that girl likes you or whatever, I'd be like, nah, she doesn't like me because I really didn't like myself. I really didn't love myself. And so um, I realized that through the process of jujitsu, and my dad always says this, he says, you never know what's in a bag of tea until you put it in hot water. Jujitsu is that hot water and we're the tea. Mm -hmm. We don't know what's inside of us until we allow it to come out. And you and I both know that in jujitsu, you get beat up, like, you know, you have good days, you have bad days. There's so much adversity and so much challenge that uh, comes out over the course of our journeys that it really helps you to discover who you are. And so that was one of the biggest blessings or gifts that Jiu-Jitsu gave me. It was just a self-discovery process and really helping me step into the person that I knew I was meant to be. And so, you know, it helped me to get more confidence talking to girls. And I remember uh, applying for a sales job at the time too. It's funny how we have a lot in common with our stories, but my mom was like, are you sure you want to do sales? Like, you know, you have to talk to people, right? And I was like, yeah, you know, I, I, I want to try and do this. You know, I want to, so I, this jiu -jitsu, is after starting jujitsu. It was after starting jujitsu. So jujitsu kind of helped me see that, again, if I continue to invest in myself, that I could be a better person. But it gave me the confidence just to even say, hey, I want to try this sales thing. Mm -hmm. And so I realized, um, again, I was thankful for that opportunity as well, being in sales, which gave me the opportunity to speak and get to know people and step out of my, my comfort zone. But um, I'm not quite sure if I would have taken that step if it wasn't for the little bit of confidence that I gained just from jujitsu. And it's kind of weird to think about, but when you roll with a guy who's, uh, you know, a 200 pound, uh, you know, guy who's off the street, who's not very skilled and, you know, I'm 5'6", 155 pounds. Um, you know, if, for somebody like me who was able to defend myself and not only defend myself but sometimes you know do well mm -hmm. um i was like man it, it gave me a sense of belief in myself physically which then also compounded and, and led me to believe in myself more uh, off the mat and so i got into endeavors with sales ended up running uh, a couple branch offices um, as a sales manager and it just helped me to really love who i was at the end of the day and so um, that kind of led me to where I am today, you know, married, two children. Like, I don't even think I would have been the person that um, was ready for Michelle unless I had all these opportunities to work on myself. And, um, you know, married with two kids and just having a beautiful family here in Hawaii has just been the biggest blessing to me. But I think most people who go out, you know, from their day to day lives and, and they work and they take care of their kids and you know, they exercise and so forth. We all need that outlet that helps us be a better version of ourselves, whether it's jujitsu or something else. But for me, it was jujitsu, and I'm just very thankful that I have that opportunity um, to really uh, step in again to the person that I was uh, meant to be. And so that kind of led me to where I am today. And then, you know, obviously, it's been a blessing to meet you and Bella and uh, have a unique opportunity with our space here and whatnot. But um, I think what my heart is moving forward is to be able to give that back also. You know, when you go through adversity, and again, I just, I really didn't like who I was. You know, I, I never want students coming into the gym to to hate themselves, you know? And it's, I think especially today with social media, you know, we're constantly comparing ourselves to one another, constantly thinking, I'm, I'm not good enough, or that person is better than me. We, we tend to cast our insecurities on other people and helping people work through those things and really rise up into the best versions of themselves and using jujitsu as a vehicle which I think led to how we came up with DBG. Mm -hmm. DBG stands for David versus Goliath Jiu-Jitsu, overcoming our greatest obstacles on the mat, uh, but also off the mat. 
And then the mission statement we came up with was to inspire people through jujitsu to be devoted to the virtuous growth. growth, helping people be committed. You know, what it means to be committed, not only to jujitsu, but committed to your family, committed to your belief systems, right? Um, virtuous, being somebody of good character that other people want to be like, uh, that's trustworthy. That's, um, you know, just a good, just good people to be around, right? Virtuous, meaning you, you take care of the people that are around you, you know, make the world a better place, right? And then growth, obviously, uh, making that, that correlation between jujitsu and wanting to continue to grow on the mat um, and, and never wanting to stay in a place where we're plateaued, right? Where life gets stale, where we're unsatisfied. We always want to try and find what my dad says is like your 12 volt battery, what, what gets you excited to, to live. You know, and um, uh, inspiring people to want to continue to grow and discover who they are, but grow to reach their potential. I believe every one of us uh, and every one of you guys watching out there, everybody has something unique inside them that is, is special and that's um, unique and, and that's designed to impact the world, impact the people around us. And sometimes we have a hard time discovering what that is, but helping other people reach that. You know, so again, it's DBG, Devoted to Virtuous Growth. It's not only something that we um, hope to embody and to lead by example, but it's something that we can inspire other people to pursue as well. And so I'm really excited to continue to move forward with, with you and with our vision and um, yeah, just kind of uh, share what I can from, from what I've learned over the years and, and just share the gift of Jiu-Jitsu of, of um, you know, the transformation. I think that's what people long for at the end of the day is they want to they want to transform whatever it is a part of their life you know whether it's you know training for the confidence like me or whether it's the weight loss or something else usually an external uh, uh, goal is somehow tied to an internal desire and I, I don't know I can't remember where I read this but it's like as humans we all desire for three things at the end of the day whether it's health wealth you name it million dollars a car whatever it always comes back to three things it's love joy and peace Right? I want a black belt because I either want more love, more joy, or more peace. Right? Think about it. And I, I applied that to the context and I was like, is that really what I wanted? And uh, realizing my journey, I was like, you know what? I kind of wanted people to respect me. I wanted to get a black belt to be somebody who's worthy of respect. And then you tie that back. What is that? That's love. Mm -hmm. Respect is just a form of love, you know? And man, I want to be a black belt or I run, a, run an academy so that way I can feel alive every day and do something that I'm passionate about. What is that? That's joy. Mm -hmm. Right? And man, I just want to be able to come home at night and I have a good night of sleep knowing I left it all on the mats and you know I, I impacted other people and that's peace you know so I think that uh, through this uh, vehicle which is jujitsu being able to spread that message of DVG devoted, devoted to virtuous growth but helping people really uh, get more love joy and peace I think that's what it comes down to for me I, love that. Yeah. I didn't I didn't want to stop you because that was so awesome <laughs> uh, but it sounds like this bullying situation uh, instilled in, this, in you this fear of helplessness and once and like because being a smaller kid not knowing any combat uh, you were pretty helpless yeah yeah and and if you you know once you got once you had, uh, uh, acquired jujitsu you were able to okay I'm not helpless I'm not helpless and now you seem like the most capable guy I know yeah. If I call you, I'm like, Brandon, how do we do this? You're like, I, I got it. I'll, I'll double check. I'll get back to you in an hour. And then I'll get a, a six paragraph long email uh, <laughs> with with uh, itemized results. And it's like, you you had to get this feeling and this, this resentment of yourself for being that helpless kid mm -hmm. off. And the only way to do that was to not be helpless. Yeah. And combat and jujitsu was just the vehicle for you. Yeah. And like you said, it's not like you could have done it with, with anything. Basketball, you know, you could become a really good basketball player or golfer, you know, anything you want. And I think once you got that help, helplessness monkey off your back, now look at you. Now you're able to, to go out and passionately pursue things because in jujitsu, I think that you are the ultimately not helpless person. Yeah. Yeah. You have the ability to turn on uh, adversity conquer mode. Right. And any problem that comes your way, you can solve it. Right. And jujitsu gave your belief in that. Yeah. Because if I, I know I wouldn't have the confidence in myself. Imagine the fear a normal man has when they walk around 
and they don't know that they know what to do right. if something like that were right. to happen. Right. Yeah, that's frightening. Some people feel that with different things, yeah. but I think I think that is the the secret to your success is getting that helplessness thing off your back, and all of a sudden you can believe in yourself yeah. because you yeah. can. Yeah, that's a big part of it for sure. I loved listening to you talk about it. That was really good. <laughs>